So, hello, Shen. Uh, could you present yourself for those who don't know you on our website? Yeah, so I'm Sean Garris, the in-game leader for Misfits, Counter-Strike CSGO. Uh, I've been playing CSGO since probably it was like created um, <laughs> and played 1.6 before that. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of pro player in NA who also streams. Uh, there's much less in the EU. How can you explain that? Um, I don't know, actually. That's a very good question. I think the practice schedule is a little bit more strict probably in the EU. Um, we've tried to adhere more to an, a European practice schedule since creating Misfits. It's one of the reasons why probably like anyone on our team hasn't really been able to stream much, <laughs> honestly. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of teams, though, don't play as much as Europeans. So they feel like they can stream, stuff like that, which is, I think is why Europeans don't stream is because they play like eight to 10 hour days and you're tired, you're exhausted. You don't want to stream for four hours and talk to thousands of people in chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, with Misfits, you're in partnership with a big NBA club, Miami Heat. How does it feel to, to be able to work with such a big structure? Uh, it's pretty awesome, honestly. Like to have an NBA team backing you is, pretty sick actually like i know they've like favored a couple tweets have replied to some of our tweets and uh it's it's pretty cool because you get exposure that you would have never gotten in esports without yeah. them entering the scene uh is there were another club that wanted to like to sign with you would why w which one would you choose in, in the nba oh like basketball team yeah <laughs> um maybe one like close to me like right now los angeles lakers just because yeah. I could go to the game. <laughs> I mean, no, no particular reason, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Um, you picked two French player. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose them instead of American free agents, FPL players? Yeah. So that was actually like a lot. Um, so I found Devo originally, actually. So I found Devo by kind of sorting the HLTV statistics for the last yeah. three months, and he had really good stats. And then from there, I looked at several of his demos. I downloaded his demos, and this is before I ever talked to him, so he didn't even know mm. that I was looking at him as a, as a pickup. Yeah. And he played very poised, and he was very composed in mid-game scenarios. He reacted well. He wasn't rushing anything. He had great aim, worked great with teammates, and played a role that we could use on the team, which is like kind of like secondary, secondary into bomb sites, yeah. like pseudo lurk. Um, but he also had like a bit of aggression to him, so. Uh, I loved everything I saw with him, and then I kind of brought him back to the org, and the org was like, yeah, this is great. And then Peacemaker actually mentioned Almanac, um, and I actually didn't didn't really have Almanac on my radar, so I looked back into the demos that Almanac kind of fit into, and um, Cyril, Kenny's brother, <laughs> who's <laughs> sitting right there, uh, actually did a lot of help with helping us um, mm. get them on the team at that point. Um I don't know if you know about it, but uh, Amanek and Davodivik were accused of che cheating in France. Yeah. Uh, how? What do you think about it? Uh, I mean, like at this point, every up-and-coming CS player is getting yeah. accused of cheating. You know, like, yeah, like Robs. Yeah, it's, um, it's literally absurd. Like you cannot come up through the scene anymore without getting accused of cheating. So I don't really look into that at all. And I mean, another example within the NA scene would be like Breezy. This guy mm. has been putting crazy sti statistics out now for. A year and a half and he ended up even joining a team where mm. the owner himself publicly accused him of cheating and made a cheat <laughs> video of him so um i don't know it's, it's it's all crazy to me and i don't until there's like proof that someone's cheating mm. i mean innocent proven guilt until proven guilty in my eyes so i mean i haven't seen them do anything so yeah <laughs> um Peacemaker yeah. also coach, coached Liquid when they were at the finals of ESL Cologne. Uh, what does he bring to the team? Uh, Lewis definitely brings a lot of work ethic to the team in my eyes. Um, he definitely motivates people to work harder and forces us to like stick to a strict schedule, um, which is something that I've tried to do. I just haven't had as much success as, honestly, he has in such a little time. Mm. Um, so I think that's definitely something he brings that's super positive to the team. He ha he's very prepared a lot of the times, and he works well with me, honestly. Yeah. Um, for how for how dictating both of us are when we talk and the tones of voice we use, we work very well together. So okay. Yeah. Um, do you think uh, EU is a big player pool for NA? 
the like there's a lot of EU imports, like there were simple, nor there's Amanek and Davudovic. The same way Korea is on other games like League of Legends or StarCraft. Yeah, I think it could be that way. Um, I think right now a lot of NA teams are hesitant because of communication, communication problems. Yeah. Exactly. So communication is a lot more important in CS than League. So it's a very risky move to bring in um, foreign players without knowing how, how, how well they'll communicate yeah. in high adrenaline and impactful situations in a, in a mm. match environment, you know? So um, until it's proven a couple more times, I don't think it'll get to that level, but I do see it going there in the future. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, is there some communication problem uh, with Devodivek and Amanek? Or is there English well? Like, do they speak well English? Yeah, yeah, they, they, their English is great, honestly. Um, there were certain scenarios in our match today against Navi where like certain weird rounds, when rounds break down in like weird ways where mm. the strat, you know, like say you, Navi picks off a player or we pick off a player, like several times it actually happened in yeah. this match where it was like 5v4 in our favor. Um, and then they regressed and trade kills start happening and things are happening very fast. Mm. Those scenarios are still slightly difficult, but mm. I mean, their communication is pretty on point though throughout the rounds. And it's only in those like very high intense moments that they can I lose it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but other than that, like honestly, it's gone way better than I ever thought it would. Do Do you think their integration went well because Peacemaker already had an import player to manage? Yeah, I think Lewis did a great job with um, kind of bringing them into the team, and yeah. we both made sure we heard their like what they wanted and what they liked doing, and yeah. um, you know, I think that definitely helped for sure. Uh, speaking of Luis, who is Brazilian, uh, the last two years we saw a big explosion of the Brazilian scene. Uh, did their way of uh, leading in game influence the American in game leader? Uh, I'm sorry. So the question was: I Is the way Brazilian play influence the uh, way American player play? Yeah, actually. I think it has a lot. So something I noticed when SK got very successful is mm. they followed uh, like the rotations that I grew up like learning in 1.6 is they're very mm. like rotation based. Everything mm. they do is they're trying to pull and push rotations in certain ways and hit weaker areas. And I always saw similarities in like the stuff I called to the stuff that SK did. They're just way better yeah. at executing it. And they're a they're hundred times better on CT side with mid round aggressions. Um, that's stuff that Lewis is bringing into the team, and I, I really love that aggressive style that he's mm -hmm. bringing into the team, and that's something that he brought to yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good luck for the rest of the tournament, and uh, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.